Hello and welcome to Study IQ. Today we are going to discuss a very interesting science and technology topic. The theme of today's discussion would be understanding thermonuclear fusion reaction, not the fission reaction but the thermonuclear fusion reaction. You can see the headline here creating a sun in a lab. It's not a hypothetical headline. There is a lot of research and development going on on how to create an artificial sun on earth. Now we all know we have all studied in our schools that the ultimate source of energy on earth is what the sun the sun continuously gives us heat and light but where is that energy coming from have you ever wondered i'm quite sure you have learned that in school that in sun which which uh, runs at a very very high temperature there is a sustained thermonuclear fusion reaction going on because of which it is giving us heat and energy and now we are trying to replicate this on earth itself in fact you must have heard about the recent news snippets that an artificial sun experiment was successful in china for 17 minutes i'm repeating for 17 minutes in china the thermonuclear fusion reaction ran so artificial sun experiment was quite successful where it gave out energy for 17 minutes sustainably why we are discussing this at all because just a few days back another successful experiment has also been conducted in europe where thermonuclear fusion reaction on a sustainable level for a short time was conducted successfully now we are going to understand is there any possibility of creating sun in a lab because we are heading towards that there have been positive reports from two experiments from china and from european union Now in this discussion we'll discuss about the international thermonuclear experimental reactor which is a collaboration of 35 countries where the group is looking to create a sun in lab that means the countries are now striving to create a perpetual source of energy very similar to sun on earth just imagine the possibilities if we are able to do this safely please remember that safely because whenever i discuss thermonuclear fusion reaction i always give example of a movie you must have seen a movie spider man with spider man 2 where the villain is otto octavius he was going for an experiment where for a fusion reaction itself and and something happens a, a blast happens and there is a possibility of even a black hole although a fictional movie but this thermonuclear fusion reaction can be very very risky because we need to control it most of the electricity plants that we find today the power plants the nuclear power plants we have in kalpakam we have in kudankulam we have in many areas all those they work on nuclear fission process right but nuclear fusion and controlling nuclear fusion is a big big challenge for scientists where they are looking for excellence there let's try to understand where are we standing today in terms of fusion in the world this would be the agenda today to get to know all that information stay with me i am your friend rahul sagangar you can follow me on this id and if you are preparing for upsc civil service examination or state psc examination or any other competitive exam do visit studyiq.com or you can also download our app from google play store where you'll get all the information about us right let's begin our discussion but with the basics as i told you whenever we talk about nuclear energy nuclear reactions they occur in two processes one is nuclear fission one is nuclear fission fusion pardon me fusion means breaking off a bigger atom fusion means fusing of two smaller atoms and i told you majority of the power plants that we have they work on the fission process now in the fission process a bigger atom the, the most uh, classical fuel or the most popular fuel that we use is uranium right uranium is a bigger atom when we fire a neutron on it it breaks into two subsequent atoms or a single atom by release of neutrons further the reaction is perpetual and we have seen we have seen the atom bombs we have seen weapons right all these things have been seen most of them they work on the fission reaction itself but fusion is something opposite now in fusion two smaller atoms they meet to create a bigger atom and release energy right that's the basic difference the name itself suggests nuclear fission means a fissile material a fissile atom is taken it is bombarded with neutrons where it breaks into smaller atom but in fusion smaller atoms combine to become a bigger atom or a bigger element and then release energy now the question is so how is this energy released see let me put it in very simple terms in a fusion reaction 
there is a nucleus we all know if you, if you look at the structure of the atom there is a nucleus correct nucleus at the center and electrons are revolving or there's an electron cloud around the nucleus and nucleus composes of proton plus neutrons this is the basic that we have learned in school now in a fission reaction when i bombard this nucleus with a neutron this particular nucleus breaks and how the energy is released see when a nucleus is stable that means proton and neutrons are in a stable condition but when we look at proton and neutron there is a mass deficit in both neutron is slightly heavier than proton so this mass deficit or mass defect which is also the binding energy whenever i break this binding energy then energy is released so in fission the repulsive repulsive forces the force of neutron has to be higher so that the binding energy is overcome and that releases enormous amount of energy for us while breaking the bigger atom or bigger element into smaller element that's the basic idea now in a fusion reaction the opposite happens smaller nuclei or smaller atoms they combine to form a heavier single nucleus now the question arises sir how is the energy released again the sum of the masses of the product initial product if you look at deuterium and tritium right these are isotopes of hydrogen so when they combine a helium atom is created but there is a difference now you see here there are two protons two neutrons there's one neutron excess and the mass defect or the mass deficit again gives out enormous amount of energy that's the basic idea behind nuclear fission and nuclear fusion i hope it's clear now we spoke about the fission and fusion what are the materials which are used as i told you nuclear materials fissile materials obviously the bigger elements or bigger nuclei like the uranium plutonium but fusionable materials are smaller materials hydrogen deuterium isotopes of hydrogen deuterium tritium helium these are the smaller atoms which combine which fuse to form slightly bigger nuclear or slightly bigger atoms while releasing energy right now we were discussing about the sun and i told you sun gives us light and heat it is the ultimate source of energy on earth what is happening in the sun in sun there is a sustainable and i when i say sustainable there is a cyclic reaction wherein hydrogen combines continuously to form an isotope of hydrogen isotopes of hydrogen combine to form helium now helium isotopes they combine again to form another form of helium or isotope and giving out hydrogen again so you can see what reactants began those reactants are again coming back as a by product in the final reaction so it's a set of cyclic reactions continuously and in each and every reaction there is energy which is released that is why we say that sun is at a very very high temperature right more than 6000 kelvin temperature so it gives us heat and light because of this thermonuclear fusion reaction that's the ultimate source of energy for all of us and we are trying to replicate exactly this in fact we are yet to understand how exactly sun or for that matter the stars are working sometimes we see that the stars collapse right so when will the sun collapse we do not know probably billions of years ahead let's not bother about that right now all right now the question is how do i replicate this on earth have there been any attempts yes of course right from 1930s because when we when we spoke about the fission or when we understood fission we understood fusion also so in physics laboratories the fusion experiments began on a very small scale by mid 1950s when the world was going through a cold war on one side ussr block on the other side usa block on both the side there was a lot of spending on r&d to understand fusion machines or to create fusion reactors because by that time fission was very prominent in most of the industrialized countries they have they have already had nuclear weapons first usa got it then ussr got it then the other developed countries china also got it we also have nuclear weapons but most of them are fission material right or most of them they follow the principle of fission reaction but during the cold war both ussr and usa stepped up their experiments to understand fusion or to control fusion now in 1968 the soviets that is ussr they came up with a viable design because see whenever i talk about nuclear fusion it's very tough to control it see in a in a fission reaction i told you if that is uranium right if it is uranium i bombard it with a neutron i am giving some energy which which basically breaks the binding energy and energy is released but when it comes to smaller atoms like hydrogen right if i say two deuterium atoms are mixing then i need some sort of a push and what is that push i need to input some energy that is heat so for 
two smaller atoms or two nu smaller nuclei to fuse. The first thing is I need to create a hot plasma because sun is very hot. So I have to create a hot plasma and then give the inputs deuterium, tritium, they mix and become helium. But creating that temperature is very easy, but controlling that temperature is very hard. Because see, in a fission reactor, it is very simple. We have seen in a fission reactor, there is a concrete wall, then there is a steel wall, inside there are control rods, inside there is the fissionable material. And if something goes wrong also, there is a thick concrete wall and a thick steel container in which you can control the reaction. You have control rods also. Despite all these protections, we have seen disasters in Fukushima, in Chernobyl, etc. Imagine if I'm not able to control the fusion reaction because in fusion, creating high temperature is very fine because I can create plasma using the lasers. I have laser technology, but controlling that temperature, not to touch the exterior, because if it touches the exterior, forget about steel, forget about concrete, nothing is going to stay there. The reaction is going to get adverse and it is going to spread continuously. It is going to take more and more hydrogen from atmosphere. And then if a sustainable reaction runs, then the earth will end on a hypothetical level I'm telling. So I need to control that within a confine, right? And that confining experiment itself took years. So in 1968, the Soviets came up with a viable design of something called as a tokamak. Now tokamak, it is an acronym of a tongue twisting Russian term called as Toroidalnya Kameras Magnetim Katushkami. Now that means toroidal chamber with magnetic coils. Now, this was developed by two Soviet physicists, Igor Tam and Andrei Sakharov. They conceptualized that if I create a magnetic field, then I can control the hot plasma and I can control the reaction. So they came up with something called as a tokamak. Now, in fact, any experiment, be it the Chinese experiment or the European experiment or the ITER, everybody is using this tokamak technique. Now, tokamak is something like this, where a huge magnetic field is created in a torus shape. Now, torus shape means you must have seen Vada, right? The Medu Vada that you had in South India, Medu Vada, exactly a shape of Medu Vada, and the reaction is controlled in a torus shaped confine by using strong magnetic field. The plasma can be controlled. And as of today, as of 2022, to control thermonuclear fusion power or thermonuclear fusion reaction, the best possible solution as of today, practical solution is the tokamak that is a torus shaped magnetic field where we confine the plasma. And based on this itself, you must have heard the news in, in January 2022, we got this news, China successfully tests artificial sun to harness clean energy by 2040. I told you this experiment ran for 17 minutes there. They used again tokamak experiential uh, advanced superconducting tokamak or east. And why are we discussing this? Because just a couple of days back, the European Union has also announced news. Fusion energy breakthrough has been achieved at world's leading joint European Taurus facility. Now here also for a sustainable time, the thermonuclear fusion reaction ran. Now based on these new snippets, we can look at the future. Why? Because right from many years, international thermonuclear experimental reactor is being built. It is built in it is being built in France. Now you can go to the ITR website and check all the details. They have a plan of action right now. They're still in the testing phase. They are building a tokamak. You can see here the pictures of building tokamak or uh, the representation of that. Now, what is this ITER? ITER is being built in France. It's the first big fusion device where net energy is going to be positive. But as of now, see, if you talk about European experiment or the Chinese experiment, Right now, the amount of energy that is pumped in into the thermonuclear fusion that is not equal to what we have received. That means the input is still more than the output. The output will be more when it when it is sustainable. We need to control it if it is sustainable because huge amount of energy is required to create that plasma only and control that plasma. So the input energy is still higher than the output energy. This ITER, it ultimately aims to produce 500 megawatt of fusion power on a sustainable basis. As of now, 35 countries are collaborating for this for this particular project. India is a participant and it's a multi-billion dollar project which is scheduled for completion in 2025 where the first plasma would be infused in the tokamak. 
then we will see how it works. But ultimately, the aim of ITR experiment is to scale up the source of energy. Imagine, I told you, it's it's there are infinite possibilities if we create an artificial sun, sustainable artificial sun on Earth. Imagine, all the energy problems would be gone. We don't need coal. We wouldn't need anything. We simply need the ITER or the thermonuclear reactors. And then perpetually, we can generate electricity, perpetually power would be there 24 7 365 days so it's still work in progress in 2025 the first uh, plasma would be generated and it be put into the tokamak so we'll wait and watch for this but this is a very positive news for the entire iter team because the chinese have been able to sustainably run the experiment for around 17 minutes the europeans have also been uh, quite successful now and the itr team is working in full swing and India is also contributing to it from India's point of view India is a member of ITER in France apart from that from Indian side Institute of Plasma Research in Gandhinagar and hot plasma project at Saha Institute of Nuclear Physics Kolkata they have been premier institutions which are again collaborating with international organizations they are the leaders in nuclear fusion research in India so India is contributing its bit also We'll wait and watch for the development of ITER. Keep your eyes and ears open for any news connected to this. That is it right now in this discussion. Thank you for watching this video. Jai Hind.